What's up, everybody? Bradley Flowers here with this week's episode of the Centers of Influence podcast, the show where we bring you cool people in Mobile doing cool things. And I don't think there's anybody cooler than the guy I'm going to have on today. Um, he's a good friend of mine. He's been to Mobile before and a little bit different episode, whereas he's not somebody that's in Mobile. But um, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, I'm super excited this week to bring on Jesse Cole of the Savannah Bananas baseball team. For those of you that don't know Jesse or don't know what the Savannah Bananas are about, you're about to get a nice Thanksgiving size helping today. Jesse, for the folks on here that don't know about you or the Savannah Bananas, um, take us back and let's catch up to speed to today. Thanks, Bradley. And so fired up to be with you and so fired up to be bringing the Bananas show and circus to Mobile. Uh, Never thought two years ago in my first experience speaking in Mobile that we'd bring the Bananas show there, but uh, fired up to make the announcement and, and come to town. But yeah, Savannah Bananas. So we uh, started a team about five years ago. Professional baseball was in, my, in uh, the Grace Stadium for over 90 years. And we came in as a small college summer league team, very low level. And uh, we decided to challenge the way baseball has always been played. And we had this big goal, big mindset to change the game, make it more fun. And Bradley, as you know, we struggled at first. I think we only sold two tickets in our first three months. And, uh, you know, it got so bad that in six months after we came to Savannah, my wife and I learned that we overdrafted our account and we were completely out of money. And we had to sell our house, empty out our savings account, and we were sleeping on an airbed. That's that never happened to a new business owner, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all keep that a secret. Now, now we didn't tell anyone what was happening, but now we're, we're fine with telling people that. But uh yeah, so we realized that we had to really get attention and be dramatically different if we wanted to get the hearts of the people in Savannah. And so we uh, challenged the game of, of baseball and challenged uh, you know, who we could be. And so we named the team after a fruit. We became the first ever team named after a fruit, the Savannah Bananas. And we came up with a senior citizen dance team called the Banana Nanas, a male cheerleading team called the Mananas, which is now referred to as the Dad Bod Cheerleading Squad. We came up with a mascot split. We started saying our players are going to do choreographed dances, have a break dancing first base coach, have a 20 piece banana pep band and literally turn it into a circus. And lo and behold, we did after a lot of criticism at first, people came out that first night and when they left, all of a sudden tickets just went crazy. Everyone was talking about the experience and we were so fortunate that since we've sold out every single game in Savannah and the wait list is still in the thousands to get tickets. So that brings us to this year. We said, how can we bring the show to more people? And we announced the One City World Tour, had over a thousand nominations, 15 countries reached out, and uh, Mobile uh, was the choice. And it's the number one choice, and that's where we're going, and we're fired up about it. That's amazing, man. What, to just get right into it, uh, what about Mobile made you want to come here? Well, two years ago when I was for the, at the Senior Bowl and spoke at the uh, leadership uh, event, uh, blown away by the reception. You know, I was out there in my crazy yellow tux speaking about what we're doing, how you need to stand out and be different as a business. And the reception was unbelievable. And the people uh, really were very intrigued and excited about what we were doing in Savannah. And I remember, you know, yourself, Scott, took me around town. I was like, man, this is so similar to Savannah in the sense that literally it's a beautiful city, yet baseball's gone. Minor league baseball left. And when we yep. heard that literally minor league baseball was leaving and a stadium, Hank Aaron stadium with, you know, good storyline and the Hank Aaron museum is gone. You know, that's the same storyline for us. And so we thought, could we bring back the excitement, energy and fun to a whole nother level? And, uh, with the reception that we've had, uh, we've realized that it was definitely the right choice. So it's been really wonderful to see. Yeah. Not to mention the whole connection to Hank Aaron. I mean, that's, you know, I feel like as Mobilians, sometimes we, we, we take that for granted a little bit, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, Hank Aaron actually, yeah. I mean, Hank Aaron actually played at our stadium in Savannah. He was, he as his brother coach. He played there. I mean, obviously you got the home run King and you know, one of the things I preach for all businesses too is, you know, you got to keep coming to back, keep trying new things. And, you know, Hank Aaron had the second most at bats more than anyone that ever played the game. And, you know, he's the home run King and he kept playing, kept persevering and a great storyline and obviously has some great roots in Mobile. Yeah. Talk a little bit about, uh, I know everybody that's watching this is wondering why the heck is this guy yelling a yellow tux with a top hat? Talk a little bit about why you do that and, and kind of the, the ethos of, of that. Sure. Well, everything, everything starts for us on, you know, what are the challenges? What are the frustrations uh, with baseball? And we started there and said, you know what? There are some real challenges of baseball. It's too long. It's too slow. It's too boring for too many people. Let's make it fun. And I uh, read every single book about Walt Disney and about P.T. Barnum. 
And I realized if we're going to make it a show and our players are going to do choreographed dances, we're going to pie people during the games, have almost a circus, I cannot be dressed like your regular uh, person on the field. And mm -hmm. so many years ago, I decided, you know what, I'm going to stand out. I want to be different because that's who I am. I want baseball to be fun. I want to be crazy. I want to be a little over the top. And so I started wearing a yellow tuxedo about seven or eight years ago, and it stuck. I own, now own seven of them. I actually proposed to my wife in front of a sold out crowd in the yellow tuxedo. She actually said yes, and we're still married. So give big, big props to my wife, Emily, uh, for staying with us. But uh, yeah, you know, I wrote a book, Find Your Yellow Tux, How to Be Successful by Standing Out. And, uh, you know, I believe uh, often, you know, we are, we're born to stand out, but so often that we try to fit in. And I think mm -hmm. now more than ever, we need to stand out. People need memories. People need experiences. People need adventures and people need fun. And so, yes, people look at me like I'm this crazy guy in a yellow tux, but this is my uniform. And for me, when I wear this, it's showtime. And so yep. uh, when you see me in Mobile, I'll definitely have this on ready to bring the show. And people will not mistake you for anybody else. So, <laughs> you know, you mentioned something there, not to go super marketing business because we really don't do that on this show. But, you know, I was on the phone with a company this morning, was just talking to them about some marketing stuff. And and they were, they were doing some sort of giveaway, giving away a gift card or something like, guys, don't give away the TV, give away the family movie night, give away the experience. That's what people want to feel. That's what they want to have, especially with COVID now. I mean, everybody's so like, so like, you know, quarantined and like travels way down. And I think people are, are, are yearning for experiences. Talk a little bit about the hoopla and the fun that goes on with a Savannah Bananas baseball team in Savannah and what the folks in Mobile are going to get. Because frankly, I used to go to at least one or two Bay Bears games a year when the Bay Bears were here. And I didn't really go for the baseball. I went for the hoopla. I went for the beer. I went for the hot dog. I went for the, the fun stuff they did in between innings and things like that. So talk a little bit about how you guys are doing that on steroids at the Savannah Bananas. Yeah, I mean, we had to. And, you know, when we first came to Savannah, we weren't selling tickets. My first team in Gastonia that we had many years ago, there was only 200 fans coming to the game. And so for people that don't love baseball, we say you'll love our shows. And so we had to reimagine what a fan experience looks like when you first come into your ballpark. So for us, when it comes to, I mean, we'll have the full 20-piece pep, pep band playing Rocky music, playing Can't Stop the Peeling, playing Final Countdown. Our players are outside greeting the fans and signing autographs. We actually have a professional high-fiver. Like crazy now during COVID times, he became the professional air <laughs> high fiver the past season. But you know, then we have our senior citizen dance team of about ten banana nanas. Our male cheerleading team who's got full costumes that's getting the crowd pumped up. We look at it like we have five stages: the parking lot's a stage, the front plaza is the stage, the concourse is the stage, the grandstand is a huge stage for us, and then the field is the stage. And my biggest fear is that fans come to a game and are bored. And I, you know, that, like how many times do you go to a great movie? or a great show and you leave in the middle. It yep. doesn't happen, yep. but baseball games, it happens all the time. Yep. So we said, what do we do to make it more fun, more exciting? So one of the biggest things that they'll see, not only the show and the band and the performers and our breakdancing first base coach, who's unbelievable, uh, does backflips while he's coaching first. They're also gonna see our next biggest uh, challenge and is making the game faster. And so we uh, changed the game, the rules this past year and tested something out called banana ball. And it is the world's fastest and most entertaining, exciting game of baseball. And it's all within two hours. And so we literally changed the rules. You know, it's, it's. That's rules. music to my ears because it's hard <laughs> for me to give up. The, I love golf. I played golf yeah. in college. I don't play golf anymore because I can't give up four hours. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And the same thing with families, even on a Friday or Saturday night, if they come in and see the whole pre-show and the performances before the game, they come at six o'clock. The game starts at seven. I want the show to be over at nine o'clock. They can get home and still have an amazing time and want more. And so that's a different mindset. So yeah, our, our new game rules of baseball, banana ball, uh, you know, we, we took all the bat boring parts of baseball and eliminate them. And we added all the exciting parts. So quickly, do you want me to share a few of those? Absolutely. Yeah. So banana ball, here's every inning counts. So here's the concept. Every inning counts. If you win the inning, you get a point. First team to five points wins. So very simple. The visiting team scores one run in the first and the home team scores two runs. The inning is over. The home team gets a point. So it creates a walk-off situation in every single inning. But the most exciting parts of baseball is the walk-off. So yeah. innings can just, instead of the inning where a team scores 10 runs and it kind of just keeps going and going, that inning would be over with as soon as they take the lead. So first team to five wins. Batters cannot step out at all. So pitches will be happening much faster. No stepping out. You can steal first. 
So if there's a pass ball on any count, the batter can just take off and steal first, which is very exciting. There's no walks. Walks are boring. So the way we eliminate walks, if you have a fourth ball, it's called a sprint. And the hitter gets to run to as many bases as possible while the fielders have to throw the ball to every position player before it becomes live. So you're watching the ball throw around the whole field, and then all of a sudden, uh, the hitter's running to second. Um, other civil rules, no mound visits, no bunting. Bunting sucks. We eliminated bunting. All right, no bunting. bunting does suck. Uh, I agree. Yes, exactly. No bunting. And then the one that fans love the most, uh, if fans catch a foul ball, it's an out. So if there's a foul ball in any situation, bring your glove, be ready, because fans playing a part in the game. And then finally, the last rule is the showdown, which picture a penalty kick in soccer. One of the most exciting plays in sports is the penalty kick. We added the same thing. If a team is not up to five points or the two-hour time limit hits, it goes to a showdown, one-on-one, -on -one, pitcher versus hitter. The pitcher has to either strike them out or get them out, or their hitter has to score. There's no one on the field. So both teams are watching, cheering, yelling, and the pitcher versus the hitter. It's exhilarating. We've done this before. And so that is banana ball in a nutshell. So add that plus the show, the bat flips, the celebrations, the promotions, the fun. Uh, we can't wait to bring it to Mobile. So are you guys doing just banana ball now, like say back in Savannah next season, you guys are just doing banana ball? Uh, I, I wish. No, we're okay. still part of a league, so we have gotcha. to play the traditional baseball games. But when we have games in the off season, in the spring, in the fall, yeah. we will play banana ball because fans do love it more. And just so you guys know that are watching or listening to this, like he's skipping over one of the best parts, which is he is entertaining as heck himself. And I can tell you from personal experience, so when Scott Tindall and myself hosted the Senior Bowl Summit in 2019, Jesse was our MC essentially. Um, although he was much more than that when it came down to it. But we had, I mean, Gary V. We had Todd McShay from ESPN. We had um, John Gruden, uh, Kyle Shanahan. And the biggest compliments and the most compliments I got were, wow, Jesse Cole was amazing. He was the star of the show. He was the, the steroids for that conference. And we even saw some conferences after that try to duplicate it a little bit, but not as well with other folks. So, um, I think whomever goes to this event, regardless of if you are a baseball fan or not, are going to be highly entertained and come away with a 10-star experience. Um, Jesse, talk about, I know we're real early. This was just announced today. Talk about when the event's going to be. Obviously, Hank Aaron Stadium is the location and how folks can find more out about this. Yeah, very excited. So it's March 26th is the date. Hank Aaron Stadium, March 26th. We're bringing the whole show uh, to Mobile. Um, we, are, we have set up a, a wait list and priority list. Um, we know we're already starting to get uh, lots of people joining that. And we know 5,000 seats um, is not too many for an entire city. So um, joining the priority list, uh, we're actually going to have later a, a tryout in Mobile. And we'll actually let one player from Mobile get to play for the Bananas in that game as we take on our other rivals. So we're bringing two teams, the Bananas versus the Party Animals. And uh, one player from Mobile will get to play for the Bananas. That'll be announced later. So uh, we got some other surprises up our sleeves. As, as Steve Jobs always says, always have one more thing. One well, more thing. Few more. Yeah, one yep. more thing. We got a few more things we're going to announce. But uh, yeah, just if you want to be a part of it, I I'll tell you, nothing brings us better joy, uh, greater joy than at the end of the game, afterwards, when our band's playing music, all of our players are at the plaza. We're dancing, singing. We're probably doing free giveaways and all these other things. It's the best feeling in the world. And I'll never forget, Bradley, just a few uh, two seasons ago, a, a, big, a gentleman came up to me with a mustache, gave me a huge hug at the end of the game. And uh, he goes, thanks, man. Thank you. I go, oh, no, thanks. Thank you, man. He goes, no, you have no idea. He goes, my mother and I, we had a relationship for a, a long time, but she came to one of the first games and watched the players dance and watched the breakdancing first base coach and watched the sing-offs. And she had the time of our life. Now, my mom and I sit together at every single game. Your games help bring together our relationship. And it's those moments that's why we do what we do. And if we can bring some families to have more fun than they've had, especially now more than ever, uh, that's why we're going to do it. That's awesome, man. Well, guys, that's this week's episode for Centers of Influence podcast. Jesse, I appreciate it so much, man. You are literally like the smartest guy I know when it comes to keeping your customers entertained and happy and delighted. Um, I learn something every time I talk to you. Guys, if you are not coming to this event, you are going to miss out. Get with Jesse on ticket, savannabananas.com, I'm assuming. Yep, savannabananas.com, and I'll be there. One City World Tour. So you search One City World Tour, One City it's mobile, World Tour. You'll, you'll find us ready, ready to rock. Awesome, awesome. 
Thanks so much, guys. If there's anything I can do for you, like always, reach out. Appreciate it.